Hey church family, welcome to Church LV Online. Thank you for welcoming us into your home. Do us a favor, like this video, subscribe to our channel, maybe leave us a comment. If you're new here at Church LV, have a simple way for you to get connected. Take out your phone and text the word church fam, all one word, to the number 94,000. We'd love to meet you and help you get connected into community. Well, hey, I know today is gonna bless you. Here at Church LV, we're all about leading people to encounter new life in Jesus. And I believe that that can happen right where you are. I want to encourage you, lean in, open up your heart and get ready for what God wants to do in your life today. God bless. We're going to read a couple of scriptures as we continue this series, Think Like Jesus. And the heart of the series is, is we're not just trying to follow Jesus' actions by just copying him. Like, what would Jesus do? We're trying to think like he thinks because right thinking, come on church, leads to right living. And so we've been exploring this all year, and today we're going to add another installment uh, to this sermon series, and, and we'll be concluding it next week, and then we're going to go into Easter season. It's exciting. But we're going to go to the book of Hosea. It's an Old Testament book. Maybe you've never read it before, but it's a beautiful story about God's love, and, and it, it reads like this in chapter one, a couple of verses. It says, when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go and marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. And so he married Gomer, daughter of the blame, and she conceived and bore him a son. She would, uh, be, she would literally have three children with Hosea. And uh, it just, you know, right off the bat at church, it just went Jerry Springer on us real quick. You know what I'm saying? Marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her as a sign of Israel's unfaithfulness, but my faithfulness to them. Ooh, we gonna go somewhere today. Luke chapter 22, you ready? Last supper, Jesus is eating the last meal with his disciples before he goes to the cross. And he says this, and he took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying this cup is the new covenant. Come on, church, everybody say covenant. Come on, you could do better. Don't let that mask muzzle you online. Shout it in the chat. Everybody say covenant. Covenant. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. Today's message, I want to encourage you to take notes. The title of today's message is Jesus Thinks Covenant. Jesus thinks covenant. Here's the line for the, the, ser the sermon. We think contract. Jesus thinks covenant. Oh, Pastor Benny dabbled in this topic last week. I feel like we need to take it further. And I believe God's going to speak to each and every one of us across all our locations. Let's pray in this atmosphere. Lord, we are grateful that we get to gather under your name. We want to see you for who you are. We want to encounter you, Jesus, because you're amazing. I pray that, Lord, you would speak to every person, every first-time guest, every person that maybe hasn't been in a long time, every regular. God, we open up our hearts for you to speak a word into our life. Here's our prayer, God. Our prayer is not, we'll make room for you. Our prayer is, Jesus, you have the room. It's yours. And so speak to us. We love you. We thank you for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. 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 Take a seat. Take a seat. Jesus thinks covenant. Have you ever had to define a relationship? DTR, define the relationship. Maybe you borrowed $20 from a coworker, an acquaintance, because you needed some money. And then months later, the same coworker texts you on a random day off and says, hey, bro, can you help me move today? And you're like, Nah, man, nah, nah. That's not the relationship we have set up. I needed you for $20. We are not friends. Let's define the relationship. Don't let me move with you. I don't want to help you. Moving is terrible. It's my day off. Bye. I was in love with a girl named Jennifer in fifth grade. It, it, she was amazing. This is BC days before COVID and before Christ. That's a terrible joke. And, and Jennifer, I swear, like, I loved her so much. And then right before spring break, 
she let me know she liked me. I'll never forget it. My, I, I got the butterflies, and it was back in the day where you didn't ask for people's numbers because texting was like $3 a text. I had a Nokia phone with snake on it. You know what I'm talking about? And, and so what we did is we asked for people's AOL username for instant messaging. Come on, church. Have you been a part of that? This generation that we're leading, I mean, they don't even know what we had to go through to just talk to friends. They just slide into DMs. We had to dial up our way into AOL.com. It was weird. It took like 30 minutes. And then you had to hope that the person was logged in so that you could talk to them. If they weren't logged in, you know, it, that sucks. You have to just sit there alone next to your computer. And sh- the whole spring break, I remember, I remember Jennifer, she never logged on to AOL Messenger. And so after spring break, I saw Jenny on the block. Hello, somebody. And um, she, I kid, I kid you not, I will never forget it was fifth grade. It's, it's marked in my memory. She came back with a boyfriend. So my prayer today is I hope Jennifer is doing terrible today. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Imagine I use that. That would be crazy. But no, she, 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 she had a boyfriend and I was frustrated. But the reality is she told me she liked me, but we never defined the relationship. DTR, define the relationship. This is not a relationship message, but I want to speak to any guy today. You are on your fourth coffee date with that girl and all the ladies at Seven Hills and at Green Valley, they're going to help me preach this today. You need to define the relationship. Now I'm not going to let you girls get off the hook. It's the fifth date. He paid for five dinners and you're still calling him buddy. We need you to define the relationship. Come on. Here's why I say that. Because when you don't define the relationship, it will set you up for disappointment. So like you'll have certain expectations and then it won't be met and you'll be frustrated. But the relationship never, at, it never, it never, it never promised those things and you're left frustrated. And I share that today because have you ever considered the type of relationship God wants with you and I? Let's define that relationship. Is it servant master? Some of us grew up in a a religious expression where like that was the relationship with God. Like you were appeasing God by your actions and you were living in a perpetual cycle of fear, not out of reverence, but genuine fear because you had to amount to God. And that has been your religious experience. Now it talks about that in the Bible, but that's not God's desire for us in relationship with him. Maybe it's Jesus is my homeboy. That's cool. Maybe Jesus is your bestie. That's amazing. God wants to be our friend, but he wants to be more than our friend. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about God being father. Like that's, he loves to relate to us like a father to his children, his daughters, his sons. That's beautiful. But, but, but today, I want to explore a part of God's relationship with us that the Bible talks about all through Genesis, through Revelation, and it is God's desire to have covenantal relationship with us. Covenant. Like all throughout the Bible, you see God relating to us like a husband to a wife. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, my my blood will be poured out for the new covenant. Covenant. The Apostle Paul, pastoring a church, would say, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Like he gave himself up for the church. The church is the bride of Christ. The Bible teaches us that history is culminating to a point where we will have a marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, we're going to have a wedding party with Jesus one day. So all throughout the Bible, we see this verbiage. We, we see these details. And then here, here's one that, that gets to me. The Bible says in God's relationship with us, God is a fiercely jealous lover. Oh, he's jealous. Some people say God doesn't feel anything. No, God has emotion. God created emotions. And when he feels, he feels perfectly. We, we laugh at things we should be crying about. And cry at things we should be laughing about because of sin. But when God feels something, he feels perfectly because he's holy, righteous, and just. uh, Last month, Gia, my wife, she had a crazy dream. She's sitting in the front row here. One of my favorite parts of marriage is is waking up and going, whoa, babe, what? I just had a crazy dream. And there was, there, was, there was this day she had a dream, and I, I go to the office, and she was preparing for something. It was in the morning, and she looked mad at me. And I said, 
did I do something? Like, what, what happened? She said, Michael, I had a crazy dream. You don't want to know about it. I said, no, you can't say that. I do want to know about the dream. Don't do that to me. I want to hear it. And so she shared me the dream. And I'm going to share it to you. It's kind of crazy. She said, in the dream, Michael, I was so mad at you. I was so furious. I was like wanting to scream because you were at a wedding altar with another girl. And I was like, what? And she said, yeah, like, and I remember being so mad. And then you came to me in the dream and you said, Mike, she, you said, babe, it's just one day. It's just one moment. It's just, it's just, I'll come back to you. We're still married, but I, but let me do this real quick and I'll come back to you. And, and, and I told her to chill out, like, like in the dream, like, don't ever tell a girl to chill out in real life. But in the dream, I said, chill, it's just a moment. And she said, in the dream. I caught you kissing this girl at an altar and she was mad at me in real life too, which is not fair. Like y'all make it way too hard. You're not, you, you get mad about the dream you had and you're looking at me crazy. What? What are we supposed to do as men? And, and we laugh for a moment and she said, Michael, what, you know, what does the dream mean? And I looked at her, I said, I'm not cheating if that's what you're asking. Come on, check my DMs, check my pockets. I'm innocent. I, I, and I laughed and I said, babe, you know, let me interpret the dream. If, let me go o Joseph Old Testament on the dream real quick. Let me give an interpretation. I said, babe, you know, in that dream, you know what, you know what I feel? Because I was preparing a message for our young people. I said, in the dream, what I did to you is what we do to God in real life. We're in covenant relationship. And then there's parts of our life where we go, God, I just need you to chill for a second. You can have my heart for a moment, but let me just, let me just, this is my money. This is my dreams. This is my career. This is my relationship. But we still, we still good. <laughs> covenant relationship. Now we have to define it because Listen, when you define covenant the right way, obedience takes on a new meaning. Obedience becomes more, uh, less about adhering to a master. And it becomes more about responding to a lover when you understand covenant. So what's the word covenant? I, I can't modernize it as a youth pastor. I try to like help the young people understand a word by giving other words, but the, the word covenant, I, there's no word in the English language that can adequately articulate what a covenant is other than the word covenant. Every single translation of the Bible will use that word covenant. It don't matter what translation, it'd be a message paraphrase, TPT, NIV, ESV, all say covenant because there's no other word. Covenant is different. Covenant is other. Covenant is holy. Covenant is God established covenant. It was not birthed in, hum in humans. It was birthed in God. Covenant. If you want to write this down, a covenant is a God established union. It's God. It's, it's, it's different. It, listen, it's more than a contract. We think contract. Jesus thinks covenant. Covenant is a God established union. Now you need to catch this. It's powerful in scripture. A covenant is personal and it's legal. It's personal. Like God in scripture will talk about us, him being our God and we, us being his people. You're, I'm your God and you're my people. He uses personal pronouns with us. So it's not just Jesus. It's, it's my Jesus. It's not just God. It's my God. And, 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 and you're not just daughter. You're, you're, you're his daughter. You're his son. But it's also legal. There's a legal, con there's, there's, a, there's a, it's legal, it's, it, it's connected. Listen, I need you to catch this. A covenant relationship is more than a personal relationship. It's more, it's, it's more, so it's legal, but it's more, it, it's more binding. It's more personal. It's more accountable than simply a personal relationship. It's a loving relationship made more loving because it's legal. It's covenant. So like, here's a couple of phrases to, 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 to define what a contract relationship is versus a covenant relationship. You ready? A contract relationship is, I will be what I should be as long as you will be what you should be. That's, co that's contract. That's cool. But a covenant is, is different. A covenant relationship is saying, 
I will be what I should be even when you're not being what you should be. Ooh, it's different. I will be what I should be even when you're not being what you should be. A covenant relationship. It's countercultural. There's nothing like it on planet Earth because we live in a time where happiness sits at the throne room seat of our life and everything else must bow to it. And so the moment a relationship steals from your happiness, you, you, you and I say, we want out. But, but, but happiness is not the foundation of covenant relationship. God's saying it's deeper than that. It's more than that. Don't follow happiness. That's terrible advice. Do what makes you happy. No, we, our hearts are deceitful. Our hearts lie to us. We want something one second and then something else the next second. Come on, turn. Don't, don't follow happiness. It's more than that. God, covenant is really more about our holiness than it is our happiness. But the catch is when you and I are really holy, we're really happy. It's a weird, it's crazy. <laughs> Happiness. So, so what I'm not saying today is that every relationship we have should be a covenant relationship. We're, we're going to have some contract relationship. The covenant is like a few things, like your marriage or maybe a friend. You and, you, you and a friend, you're like, we're going to get branded. We end this for life. A relationship with God, covenant. But there's contract relationships. That's normal. I have a contract relationship with my internet provider. It's good. I will be what I should be as long as you will be what you should be. The moment you don't do that, I'm going to another provider. Or the moment I find a cheaper rate, peace. That's normal. I dated a girl in, in, in sophomore year of high school. She broke up with me after I twisted my ankle in basketball. I couldn't walk with her to school, so she walked out on me. Contract relationship. Like, you dated a lot in, 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 before. Yeah, I needed Jesus. I didn't know him. She walked out. It's contract. That, that, that's okay. That's necessary. But I need you to catch this today. A covenant relationship is the most binding, life-transforming, connected relationship you and I can have on earth. And so God refuses to relate to us any way less than a covenant relationship. And every time he approaches somebody in scripture, he makes a covenant. Abraham, covenant. Isaac, covenant. Jacob, covenant. Moses, Noah, David. Jesus at the Last Supper, pouring out the wine like my blood for the new covenant. Covenant. I want to take a detour and I want to go to a story that we read at the beginning that in my opinion is the best depiction of God's covenantal faithfulness to his people in all the Old Testament. It's the story of Hosea. It's really radical. It's really crazy. It's God being faithful even when Israel was being unfaithful. It was God being what he should be even though they weren't being what they should be. And if you read the story, God calls a man named Hosea, a prophet, a man of God, to do something crazy. He says, I need you to go and marry a promiscuous woman. And this is like this is Jerry Springer. Marry somebody that's a prostitute. Like, like this is pretty right. It's not, don't just proclaim my word. Don't just predict the future. I need you, Hosea, to demonstrate my love to the people of Israel because they're not getting it. So I want you to be a personal parable, a real life HD depiction of my faithful love to them. And I need you to marry somebody that's considered a really bad person. It's radical. It's one of the greatest shadows of Jesus in all of the Old Testament. Hosea, go and marry a promiscuous woman. Look how radical this is. It's not go and marry somebody after the lifestyle of prostitution. Go marry a prostitute. I'm reminded by a scripture that says, God demonstrated his love to us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Still Still, not as the religion wants to go after. He died for you after you get your life together. 
No, 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 that's not gospel. Gospel is while you were still an addict, still away, still refusing, still denying, still doing your own thing. Jesus, come on church, died for you and I. That's the good news. Oh, it's amazing. One of the most counterintuitive aspects of Christianity is you and I are declared right before God, not the moment we get our act together, but the moment we crumble in honest acknowledgement that we never will apart from Jesus. Somebody got to help me preach this today. It's counterintuitive. I'm made right. The moment he grabs my heart. So the Bible says he marries Gomer. Hosea marries Gomer. And then we don't know how long after, maybe three years, maybe five, maybe 10. But the passage reads that at one moment in their relationship, Gomer has desires to go back to her old way, to go back to her old life. Desires, desires. It reads in Hosea chapter two, verse five, we see what was happening in her heart. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me my food, my water, my wool, my linen, my olive oil, and my drink. That sound familiar from the last two weeks? Pastor Benny talking about worry. Jesus says, don't worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, or what, 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 you, will, what you will wear. But in the Old Testament, in this story, we see her desires to eat, drink, and have some wool, and it led her to her old lifestyle. We just got out of a series in dedicated youth entitled Porn Free. It was pretty radical. We addressed the pandemic of pornography permeating our world. And we understand that it is accessible, affordable, and anonymous. So it is pervasive in our culture. And that's not just a message for young people. That's a message for us today. But the statistics will say 18 to 30 men in church, 7 out of 10, are right now struggling with pornography. And so we had to address something that was real because there's a better way, a better answer, a better, come on somebody, a better remedy than what porn has to offer. And so we were teaching our young people that all of us have desires for intimacy, comfort, and security. These are universal needs. We all want to be connected. We all want to be intimate. We all want to have security. The desires are okay. It's where we go with the desires that makes all the difference. And the enemy comes, and we, we taught that he comes in lies. It's the algorithm of the enemy. He overpromises and underdelivers. And what he did to Gomer, he does to us. The Bible says she went after her lovers and couldn't find them. She went after them and couldn't see, she couldn't have a hold of them. You, you go after something, and then when you get there, you don't have it. Oh, that's pornography. That's a lot of things in our world today. It's a promise of intimacy, but then when you open the package, you feel more alone after the experience than before. It's a product we buy into. It gets to our doorstep, and it's not what we paid for. The enemy overpromises and underdelivers pornography and so many other things in our world. It's a fake hug. It's a fake drink. It's fake food that leaves you more thirsty, more hungry, and more alone by yourself, and it tries to separate you and I from God. Oh, in the house of God, somebody better help me preach this today. There's a better way. And so the answer isn't just denying and resisting and using our willpower. We don't just resist, we replace because there are better promises for you and I in scripture that God can sustain us and fulfill us with. Oh, the Bible says in Proverbs that when your heart is full, when your soul is full, you'll turn down even the sweetest honey. But when your soul is empty, even what is bitter looks good to you. <sighs> Gomer, she doesn't find him. She goes for it, but doesn't have it. And God says a word to her. She's, look at this. This is so crazy in the book. It just it gets to me. She doesn't even realize it was I who gave her everything she has. The grain, the new wine, the olive oil. I even gave her silver and gold, but she gave all my gifts to another lover. That's the story of the Bible. That's our story before Jesus. 
It was I who gave comfort. It was I who gave security. It was I who gave intimacy. But she took that and went to another. And the Bible says she goes back. She goes back to her old way. She goes back to the very place that Hosea pulled her out of. And what God begins to tell Hosea is pretty radical today. It's in chapter three. And I want you to see this. This is, this is a display of God's covenantal love with you and I. His radical great love. It's amazing. One day as Gomer was gone, imagine that day for him. His wife that he loves is, is gone. He's asking the kids, where is mom? And, and, and they don't know, but he, he knows intuitively because he knows his wife. And he's probably broken and he's probably, honestly, just a little angry because he was providing all these things for her. She goes back and God says to her, to him, look at this. Go show your love to your wife again. Again. Oh, that's the word right there. You want to know God's covenantal love for you and I? It's again. Again, God? Yeah. Again. Go again. I know you did it, but, but go again. Can we consider the audacity of God through the life of Hosea again? I, I wish I could tell you today that I'm standing on the pulpit preaching a message to you because I got it all figured out the moment I said yes to Jesus. I wish I could tell you that when I received the grace of God in my life, I didn't abuse it or misuse it. I wish I could tell you that my journey from 16 to 27 was a perfect line towards heaven. I wish I could tell you that. But I'm standing here today preaching a message to church this weekend because God did for me what Hosea did for Gomer and he kept coming back again and again and again and again and again and again. Listen, church, it's the go again of God. And I know I'm not the only one at Green Valley or at Seven Hills that has experienced the go again of God. You fall, he goes after you again. You drift, he goes after you again. You deny, he goes after you again. You question, he goes after you again. You sin, he goes after you again and again and again. This is the audacious love of God. Come on, church. It's wild. It's all it's crazy. It's covenantal love. Nothing like the world offers. Again. You want to summarize the Bible in one word? That's a good word. Again. From Genesis to Revelation, we see God going again and again and again to his people. He'll send a new word, a new prophet, a new leader, a new king. He'll send his own son to go after what he wants, and that's us. Again, you know, we always talk about what Jesus has done for us, and we will never stop talking about that. Over 2,000 years ago, he died on a cross for you and I. He, he, he rose again on the third day for us. But right now, for a moment, can you consider what God is doing? Jesus, right now, what is he doing right now in 2021? What's he doing right now? The Bible will teach us that Jesus right now is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. <laughs> what? Right now, what's Jason? What you doing right? Isn't that crazy? Like, what? Well, I know you're here, your presence, but what you actually doing? Like right now, he's interceding for us. He's praying for us. He listen. Intercession is Jesus constantly hitting refresh to our salvation. Just nope, they're mine. Nope, they belong to me. Nope, they're not gonna drift. Nope, I love them. Nope, I know their their hearts are. Nope, I'm good. Nope. He's hitting refresh again and again. What would it be like in our worst day, our darkest moment, our greatest mistake? What would have happened if we actually believed Jesus was in the other room praying for us, interceding for us again and again and again? As the band comes up, I'm almost done, but this is God's covenantal love. Hosea goes after his wife again. 
a great preacher on this text said, what was that journey like? To go after his wife again. How messy was that? How awkward was that? Man of God going to places that he shouldn't go to to get his wife back. And the Bible says something in chapter 3 of Hosea that's pretty, pretty wild. And as Gomer was on the selling block again, as she was about to be sold back into her old lifestyle, there was somebody in the crowd bidding for her. And it was her husband, Hosea. I want her. She's mine. I'll pay for her. And the Bible says he takes 15 shekels of silver and he, that's mine, I want her. And Hosea at this moment pays for what already belongs to him. And that is one of the clearest depictions of the love of Jesus in the Old Testament. Paying for what already belongs to him. Jesus on the cross, you know what that was? Him purchasing what already belonged to him. As I looked up the word Hosea and the name Jesus, I mean, I got nerded out on this sermon for you. If you look up the word in the original language, Hosea and Jesus are almost identical. They're, they're li nearly identical. There's a little nuance in Hosea that the word Jesus doesn't have. Hosea literally means there's an imperative, God save. It's like a cry for help, like God bring salvation. But Jesus, Yeshua, you know what that means? God is salvation. So the Old Testament cry is, God, will you save? But we're standing in the new covenant where Jesus is saying, you don't have to wait for salvation. One day, salvation is available today. Right now, today is the day of salvation. God is salvation, and he's here today. Oh, and if you need a reminder, he did not pay for you with silver or gold that perishes, but Jesus bought us back by the precious blood that he shed on the cross. And I know it's a little bit of old school to say this, but we need the blood of Jesus right now in 2021. We need his blood to cover us, empower us, renew us, transform us. We need the blood of Jesus right now. The blood. The blood more powerful than addiction. The blood more powerful than cancer. The blood bigger and stronger than COVID. The blood that cleanses us of all unrighteousness. It's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So what's our response? What's our response to the love of God, his covenantal faithfulness to you and I? What's our gift back to him? And we're going to talk about God's gift to us. We will not stop. But can we stop and consider and pause for the cause and ask the question, what is our gift back to God? Is it acknowledgement? Acknowledgement is good, but I mean, we live in a generation where people write music not considering God and then get up on a stage at the Grammys and say, God, be all the glory. They acknowledge God for the reward, but they don't acknowledge him in the writing process. Is it acknowledgement? Is it praise? Praise is amazing, but Jesus, he looked at some people in the Bible and he says, you guys praise me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So, so, so what is our gift back to God? And the word I'm about to say is a little youth ministry. It's something we outgrow in our life and we shouldn't. It's something that life has tried to steal away from us because life has been crazy. What is our greatest gift back to God biblically? It's purity. Purity. <sighs> purity. What's purity? It's a state of heart where there is complete devotion to God. That's what purity is. Complete devotion to God. Like water that's unadulterated is called pure water. Like gold without alloy is called pure gold. So is the heart that is undivided towards God. That makes sense. 
purity, my whole heart. <laughs> In my relationship with my wife, what's the best gift I can give back to her? Acknowledgement, that's good, I should. Words of affirmation, hello somebody. Gifts, acts of service, that's awesome. I'll buy her a Louis bag, next paycheck. No, I'm just joking. What, what was the best thing I can give to my wife? It's not just acknowledgement and praise, those, those, those are amazing. It's me. I, me, I, me, all of me to her. We live in a time where we say, I'm going to give you the world, but we forget to give ourselves to people. And what God wants today is not just acknowledgement or praise. He wants purity, a full heart devoted to God, undivided, unadulterated, fully committed to Him. It's a big yes towards Him. We've made purity all about what it's not. Purity is more about pursuit than it is about avoidance. It really is. And you might have grown up with that word and it's a, don't touch this, wear this length of pants, don't sing this, don't go there. But that's not what purity is. Purity is Jesus, you've been so good to me. I'm focused and fixated on you and my yes to, to you comes with so many no's in my life. And so I'll turn my head if the scene divides my heart. I won't go to that place if it divides my heart. I won't call that person if it divides my heart. I won't listen to that song if it divides my heart because I I want you and you want me and I want to honor you with all of me God come on church is there anybody today that says I want to give God everything everything my mess my mistakes my wounds my scars my past my present my future my family I want to give you everything everything Jesus Oh. Come on, somebody at Church LV, give God a 10 second praise break if he's gone after you again. Somebody at Church LV has a testimony that God didn't give up on you, that he went after you, that his covenant relationship endured. All of me, Jesus. All of me, God. Come on, all across our locations today, in this atmosphere, he's here. I want to pray for a couple of groups of people. The first group, you're maybe at the Seven Hills or here at the Green Valley, or maybe online, and you've never said yes to Jesus. Maybe you've never heard about the God that goes after you, that put on flesh and blood for you to go after you. Maybe you've never surrendered the control of your life over to the God that created your life. Today is the day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. I made this decision at 16, but today's your moment. Or maybe you are a second group of people. You walked away from God for a season and you sense him calling you back home today. All throughout the weekend, people have been responding to the love of Jesus. And so many people saying yes to him. Oh, the Bible says when one person gets right, all of heaven rejoices. They throw a party. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to give you a big hand clap, but we're going to pray together. But all across our locations in this atmosphere, with every head up and eye open. If you're saying, I want to say yes to Jesus today. Come on, he catches the fish and then cleans it. You don't got to get your life together and then come to him. No. He says, I want you as you are right now, today. On the count of three, could you shoot your hand in the sky or online? You can let us know in the chat. One, you know who you are. Two, this is your moment. Three, all across our church today, you're saying, I'm coming home. That's me. That's me. Come on here. Raise your hand high like, like you mean it. I see you, bro. I see you. I see you. I see you all across Green Valley. Come on. We, we, we celebrate. Anybody else? Come on. At Seven Hills online, you're saying, I'm coming home today. Whoa. Come on. We're going to pray this together. The prayer doesn't save you. Faith in Jesus does. But why don't you attach your faith to this prayer? Everybody, come on, church family, say, Jesus, today I surrender my life to you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And I believe today 
that all my sins, past, present, and future sins, have been forgiven, forgotten, forever. Holy Spirit, come on in. Make me a new person. Change me from the inside out. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, Church LV family. Why don't we give a big hand clap for everybody that made that decision today. We welcome you into the family of God. His arms are wide. If you made that decision either now or right after the experience, why don't you take your phone out, text the word church fam to 94,000. And really all that is, is us trying to help you take your next steps and celebrating that decision with you. So be sure to do that. But here's what I want to do as we end our experience together before we give and before we pray for certain groups of people. Don't, don't leave, hold steady God's in this place. And we are right on time. I feel like just God wants to minister to us as we sing out to him. And so wherever you're at at Seven Hills, you can stay seated, you can kneel, you can stand, whatever you feel led to do. But we're gonna go ahead and sing this song one last time. Let's respond to the word today. Undivided attention towards Jesus. My whole heart to him. Come on, let's sing it out. a couple groups of people all across our locations. Maybe you're here today and you've been crippled by an addiction or a cycle, a habit. And it's not that you don't love God. You just find yourself going back. You feel like you're connected. And I feel like the grace of God today wants to reach you right where you're at, that you are not too far from the grace of God, that his blood is powerful. And yes, there's a process to healing sometimes. Yes, there's things we do. But in the spirit, in a moment, something can get released. Something can get broken off of your life so that you can walk in freedom today. I don't know who you are, but can I pray for you? If that's you, if that resonates, either put your hand in the sky or put your hand on your heart. But God is here and he wants to do something in your life today. Jesus, right now, all across our, our church, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you see us right where we are that you're the God that died for us while we were still sinners and that you keep going after us again and again and again. God, I thank you that your grace not only covers and forgives, but empowers. And we pray this in the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus, that the stronghold of addiction and habits and cycles would be broken off of your people today in the name of Jesus. It has not disqualified you. God is not done with you. The best is yet to come for you. The Bible says the righteous will fall seven times, but they get back up again and again and again and again. Hey. And maybe you're here.
you're here today, and I prayed this all weekend, I feel this as we're talking about covenant, as we're talking about a God-established union. I know there's many people maybe watching and you're carrying around the shame of a, of a marriage that didn't make it. You're carrying around the shame and guilt of a relationship that failed and because of it, it's, it's kept you. And you felt like you just you, there's nothing more for you. You feel like the, the best is behind you. You failed. You feel like you messed up. And I don't know the situation, whether it was by your choice or not, God wants to speak to you today. So if you're carrying around that today, all this weekend there are so many people responding. Why don't you put your hand on your heart? I just feel like there's a special grace for you. God, I thank you, Lord. The covenant is powerful. And we understand that your word says you hate divorce because of what it does to our hearts. And for many people watching today, their heart has been ripped apart by a past relationship. And we declare that you are the great physician that can mend a broken heart. Your word says you're close to the brokenhearted, that you can heal, restore, renew, and that the best is not behind them, the best is in store for them. So God, I thank you, Lord, for a release of vision, of faith, of hope over your people today. Shame be gone. The Bible says, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Come on, church, if you believe that today, why don't you give God one last hand clap? Come on, if you believe it, why don't you give him a shout of praise? Thank you for joining us at church today. I have a few ways that help you stay connected. The first way is if you would like prayer, go to churchlv.com forward slash prayer. We have an amazing team that would love to agree with you in prayer today. Another way to get connected is to join a group. We believe in community here at Church LV, so you can go to churchlv.com forward slash groups and join a group today. The last way you can get connected is to follow us on Instagram at the church LV, where we post content all week to help you stay connected. Let me declare some truths over you today before we end. God, you are in control. You are fighting for us. May the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may he make his face shine upon you. God bless.